Lesson 13, Part 2, Indeclinable Nouns. There are some nouns in Greek, especially those borrowed from other languages, that don't decline. They don't change forms. If you encounter one of them, you'll have to figure out by context and logic what it's doing in the sentence. You can use this list of questions to help you determine what it's doing. First, is there a definite article? If yes, the case of the noun is the same as its article. That's sort of the dead giveaway easy solution. If no, then go to step two. So next question, is the verb third person singular? If no, the word can't be the subject. If yes, is there a word in the nominative? If there is a word in the nominative, unless the verb is a linking verb, then this indeclinable noun we have is not the subject. If there's not another word in the nominative, then this word could be the subject. Try translating it and see if it makes sense with that being the subject. Next, if it's not, if the, none of that works, if you haven't found a solution for the word yet, okay, is there any word in the accusative that doesn't have a preposition so it's gonna be the direct object? Well, if there's already an accusative for a direct object, then this word we're looking at isn't the direct object. If there's not, this word could be the direct object. Let's try it out and see if that makes sense. If that doesn't work, is there a word before it that it could be the genitive of? Because genitives normally come after the word they're describing. So if there's a word right in front of it that's a noun that maybe it could be the genitive of, let's, let's try that out. Um, is there a preposition that it could be the object of, especially if the preposition's right in front of it? Could it be an indirect object? So those are sort of the questions you can ask to try to see um, what's going on. Now, th those last four, those last three questions you could really ask in any order. Um, you really want to start, though, with is there a definite article right in front of it? Because that's a dead giveaway if there is. Then check to see if it's a subject, check to see if it's a direct object, then just try some other stuff. Genitives, object of a preposition, indirect object. So here are the questions we just asked. We're going to keep them in mind and we're going to try it with these sentences. So, ek kradze Dawid twice feois. We've got um, he cried, we've got David, and we've got to God. So is there a definite article? No, there's not. Right. We can't use that solution. Okay. Is the verb in third person? Hmm, let's see. Ekradze, that's from kradzo, that's imperfect active indicative third person singular. Oh, it could be. So, is there a word in the nominative? Now, the only other thing we have besides David is we have this over here, tois theois, um, which is uh, dative and it's plural. So, that can't be the subject. So, could David be the subject? I think it could. David cried, David was crying to God. Yep, that works. Now, I'm not sure if this is an error here or if this is a Hebra uh, Hebraism. Um, in Hebrew, God is always plural, even though it's only talking about God in the singular. Um, that probably in Greek should have been singular. Um, don't worry about that. He's not crying to multiple gods. Well, maybe he is if this isn't the David of the Bible. David of the Bible would be though. All right, let's try another one. Lambanamin Dawid is meson to ieru. All right, let's try all first. Is there a definite article? No, direct. Is the verb in third person singular? Let's see, lambanamin is present active indicative first person plural. No, so David is not gonna be the subject. Okay, is there a word in the accusative without a preposition? You know, is there a direct object? No, this says in into the middle of the temple, so that's not going to be a direct object. So let's see if this sentence makes sense with David as the direct object. We are receiving David into the middle of the temple. Yes, that works. We're, or we're taking David into the middle of the temple. Yes, that works great. We're going to say it's the direct object. All right, how about this one? Mm, definite article? No. All right, verb, let's see, SD, that's present indicative third person singular. Ooh, awesome. Okay, so can this be the subject? Whoa, we already got two things going on in the nominative. 
Um, let's see. Jesus is the son. Uh, yeah. David's not going to be the subject here. We've already got too many things going on in the nominative. Okay. Could it be the direct object? Well, actually, SD can't have a direct object. So no, it's not going to be the direct object. Okay. Could it be a genitive? Could it be the son of David? Let's try it out. Jesus is the son of David. Makes perfect sense to me. That's what it is. Jesus is the son of David. All right. How about this one? Graffete lagon da we. Definite article? No. Is the verb in the third person? Whoops. No, it's in the second person plural. Present active indicative second person plural. So ye are writing. Could it be the direct object? A logon is already in the accusative. We are ye are writing a word. That doesn't make sense. Uh, could it be a genitive? Ye are writing a word of David. That's possible if you're a scribe, but that doesn't sound like the best option to me. Um, is there a preposition? No. Could it be an indirect object? You're writing a word to David. Hmm. Okay, let's weigh those two out. You're writing a word of David. You're writing a word to David. Which one makes more sense? I like you're writing a word to David. Um, if we don't have any context here, that's a more common thing to say than you're writing a word of David. So we're going to go with that. Uh, that should be ye, not we. Ye are writing a word to David. So summary, indeclinable means does not change form. For indeclinable nouns, look at the context to see what it's doing in the sentence.